All right, y'all. So when it comes to the Beetlejuice star, I still have so many questions, right? Because with its distance, how far it is away from us, how could it be such a potential threat, right? I know people have talked about it, talked about it going supernova and different things like that. So I'm trying to listen to different quote unquote experts to get different viewpoints on it, i.e. while I'm checking out this video on with Neil deGrasse and his viewpoints on the star. All right, so I, I still have a ton of questions. I know some of you still have a ton of questions. So we're going to try to continue to get different vantage points on it, right? This one is titled Neil deGrasse or deGrasse, however you pronounce it. I apologize if I messed it up. Tyson gives serious warning about Beetlejuice star explosion. All right, so we're going to check this one out. If you're new, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, join the family, and hit that like button for more content. Let's check it out. Any star will run out of fuel in its core and it starts changing, it starts bloating and getting so large that it will engulf the orbit of Mercury and Venus and come very close to Earth. So imagine looking on the horizon and sunrise is half the sky. Over the past few weeks, the James Webb Space Telescope has recorded several shocking discoveries, but this one just about takes the cake. This discovery has revealed information that might negatively affect our planet Earth. Recently, a team of astronomers devoted time to studying the final frontier with the help of the James Webb Telescope. They had pointed it toward Betelgeuse, one of the most luminous stars that grace the night sky. The James Webb Telescope picked up an odd signal which scientists interpreted immediately. This did not bode well as the signal, after interpretation, revealed the possibility of a massive supernova explosion. What does this mean for us on Earth? And how bad will the effects be from this once-in-a-lifetime supernova event? Join us in this video as we explore how the James... Therein lies my question. With it being so far away, as to from my knowledge, it's far, like super far, like hundreds of years away. Is it still a threat to us? Webb Telescope just made a terrifying announcement about Betelgeuse explosion. Betelgeuse is a star of such epic proportions that it is classed as a supernova. A regular supernova has to be at least eight times more massive than our sun. With the Betelgeuse's immense size and power, irregular pulsations, and high unpredictability, the Betelgeuse supernova is a wonder that has left scientists in awe. Its extremities defy any attempt at explanation. In this recent research, scientists were frantic to see what the JWST, alongside the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, would catch in space. They were, however, surprised when they retrieved the data that detected a light wave coming from the Orion constellation, where the Betelgeuse star resides. Betelgeuse is located at the left shoulder of Orion and is categorized as a semi-regular variable star. This means that Betelgeuse gets dim occasionally, but not regularly. The semi-regularity of the Betelgeuse star makes us understand that its distance from Earth is about 475 to 642 light-years away. See? It is also about 1400 times larger than our Sun and 14 Sheesh. times brighter. The Betelgeuse Sheesh. supernova dims once every 430 days and every six years. Whenever each dimming cycle takes place, dark spots can be seen on the surface of the semi-regular variable star. In the same way, dark spots sometimes appear on our sun's surface, only that it is larger. In February 2021, the supergiant experienced its dimmest cycle in a long while. The V-band magnitude, also called the dim cycle, had a magnitude of plus one, 614, which is still bright by all accounts, but is dimmer than the average light range Betelgeuse emits. Brightness is not the only thing the supergiant is renowned for. The star gets its signature reddish hue from its cool surface temperature, which sits at about 3,500 Kelvin, much cooler than our sun, which has a surface temperature of about 5,500 Kelvin. Betelgeuse's low surface temperature means it emits much less energy per unit of its surface area than the sun. It is due to this low energy level that it appears much dimmer than it should be, despite being one of the biggest stars known to us. Maybe it is content to sit on the sidelines and allow other stars, well, shine. 
Betelgeuse has been one of the most prominent celestial bodies gracing our night skies for the longest time. The superstar was noticed when the Greek astronomer Ptolemy noted its color as more orange tawny. This, however, was back when you could not tell anything about a star save for its color and position in the night sky. Modern astronomy, along with innovation and sophistication of astronomical and space observing instruments, has allowed scientists to measure with near perfect accuracy the intricacies of these celestial bodies. By analyzing the light that Betelgeuse emits, astronomers have figured out its size, temperature range, and chemical composition. The Hubble Space Telescope. Now, the size of it, you know, what it's saying is what, 1400 times or whatever number they threw out, it was a huge number. <laughs> times as big as our sun, right? That's the one thing that makes me still think that it could be a potential threat to us, you know? Something that big explode, okay, yeah. Even that far, we may feel some of the effects of it, you know what I mean? However long after it, you know what I mean? It takes to get to us after the explosion, but we could still feel the effects. So that's what keeps me like on the edge of saying it could be possible has provided many detailed images of the surface of the red supergiant, revealing its unique patterns of gases and dust clouds. These observations have allowed scientists to create real-life models of the star's behavior, enabling them to predict its future evolution. ALMA, a top-notch observatory in Chile, provided some ultra-high resolution images of Betelgeuse's surface, bringing to light much new information about the red supergiant's structure and behavioral patterns. One of the most fascinating discoveries made using ALMA's technology is the presence of a vast gas plume extending from the star's surface. This plume, believed to be caused by the star's pulsations, may help explain the star's unusual behavior and how it is constantly changing. Betelgeuse's pulsations are caused by a phenomenon known as convection. This convection process causes hot gases to rise and cooler gases to sink. This up and down movement, or motion, creates waves that travel through the atmosphere of Betelgeuse, causing it to expand and contract. Betelgeuse's surface is also covered in dark spots, otherwise known as star spots or magnetic spots. These star spots represent areas where the magnetic field is strongest on the star. These dark areas are cooler than the surrounding gas as these magnetic fields inhibit hot gas flow from the star's interior to its surface. Betelgeuse's magnetic field is thought to be stronger than the Sun's magnetic field by at least several thousand. These strong magnetic fields trap gases in loops, resulting in regions of intense magnetic activities that are visible as these dark spots on the images we see. Star spots are not a feature unique to Betelgeuse alone. Many stars, our Sun inclusive, have these star spots. The dark spots on Betelgeuse's surface are thought to be many times larger than Earth's and cover up to 20% of the star's surface. The presence of star spots directly affects the brightness of a star, causing it to vary over time. This means the more star spots present on a star, the dimmer the star will be. This happens because the areas where the dark sports cover are much cooler, emitting less light than areas with weaker magnetic fields. This brings us to why astronomers are bothered by the recent gravitational wave readings from the Betelgeuse star. The dimming we discussed earlier has astronomers in a fix as this is common behavior, with stars reaching the tail end of their lives. The issue now is that stars of Betelgeuse's proportions do not wither away and die quietly. On the contrary, supergiants go off in a way worthy of their size, brilliance and magnificence. Supergiants go off in a bang, a phenomenon known as a supernova explosion. Scientists have started to ponder the probability of the Betelgeuse exploding at all, and if it will, they hope it will take place soon. One would imagine- now that's the other thing, you know? It's become a, a hot topic, but we don't know if it'll happen next week, a hundred years, a thousand years from now. We don't know. Like, but all of a sudden it's become a hot topic, this, this star. And I, I, that's been like, blowing my mind as well like we don't even know or it could i don't know depending on how accurate the james webb uh or how accurate the information they're telling us from the james webb is it could have already exploded and we just haven't or we're starting to see the effects of it you know what i mean we don't know in such an occasion would be crucial in studies regarding the cosmos 
If it all goes according to the wishes of our researchers and the Betelgeuse dies off in an exploding ball of flaming gases, the effects of the supernova would be evident from Earth, even in the brightness of day. It is confirmed from the signs and data that Betelgeuse is giving that it is only a matter of time before the red supergiant bows out of the cosmos. However, the exact time this would occur is yet to be determined. From data gathered with the James Webb Space Telescope and the Hubble Space Telescope, scientists have figured out that just a couple of years ago, the red semi-regular variable star blew its top and lost a good chunk of its visible surface. As a result of this explosion, Betelgeuse is producing a large surface mass ejection that makes us wonder if it is finally about to explode in its entirety. This massive ejection and substantial dust clouds is a new experience for scientists. It is not a behavior typical of young or dying stars. Granted, even our sun loses some of its outer atmospheres in some minor ejections referred to as coronal mass ejection, but it is nothing compared to the intensity of the ejection emitted by the Betelgeuse star. The mass ejected from Betelgeuse was about 400 million times more than the average coronal mass ejection. The JWST has revealed that the red giant is slowly recovering from the massive ejection. Although the star is still under observation by scientists, they remain puzzled by these recent occurrences. This recent phenomenon with the Betelgeuse star has provided a learning curve for scientists. The observations provided by the JWST have given some insight into how red stars lose mass when they're about to die. Scientists have discovered that they lose mass or little bits of themselves because their nuclear fusion furnaces burn out before blowing up in supernovae. The amount of mass lost always has a significant effect on their fate. The recent loss of a massive chunk of its mass by the Betelgeuse star is most likely the beginning of the assurance that the loss of the giant red star is at hand. Scientists and astronomers are particularly concerned about it and are devoting their time to seeking a much more definite answer to these questions. The massive ejection of mass matter by the Betelgeuse star is assumed to have been spurred by a convective plume over a million miles across, which bubbled up from deep inside the star. This plume bubble produced heavy pulses and shocks that caused a chunk of the star's photosphere to get blown away, leaving the star with a wide, cool surface area underneath the dust raised from the mass ejection. Betelgeuse struggles to recover from this massive injury, the mass it lost weighing several times more than our moon. The liberated wow. piece of photosphere zoomed off into space, where it cooled and formed a dust cloud that blocked the star's light from reaching the Earth. Apparently, this blockage caused the dimming of the star in 2019, which lasted several months. The dimming of the Betelgeuse was so obvious that even amateur astronomers who did not have access to sophisticated instruments took notice of the intense drop in the star's brilliance. For at least 200 years, scientists and astronomers have studied Betelgeuse's rhythm and motions. These noticeable disruptions attest to the significant effects of the blowout of the star's photosphere. Tress, as well as the Hubble spectra, imply that the outer layer may return to normal soon, but the surface itself is still quite shaky as it waits for the photosphere to finish rebuilding itself. Our Sun has had its periods of coronal mass ejections, as stated before, but the difference in magnitude between the Sun's ejections and the surface mass ejections that the Betelgeuse star recently experienced has made it obvious that the two events cannot be put in the same category. You know, it make our Sun like a little flick on a lighter or a match, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It just overpowers and just engulfs what our sun is. Just looking at it, I'm in awe. Betelgeuse has expanded so much over the millennia. I need me a telescope, bad. I, ah. That if it took the position our sun currently occupies in the cosmos, its outer orbit would extend past Jupiter's orbit. Betelgeuse's red hue indicates that the star has reached the stage that stellar bodies go through when they burn out their hydrogen reserves through their core, resulting in the eventual collapse of their core and its outer layers puffing out. Our sun is still a reasonably young star and has far to go before reaching this stage. Scientists Good. have deduced that reaching this maturity stage would take the sun at least another 5 billion years. It has also been deduced that when the sun swells into its mature size, its radius would increase into proportions reaching Mars's orbit. After the great dimming of the Betelgeuse star... So basically, we don't need to worry too much about our sun in that aspect of it, but we still got to look out for, you know what I mean, asteroids and different things like that coming and hitting our planet. But the sun, 
yeah, we, we should be good on that front. Should be, I say. Something else we'll learn about about our son and be like, oh, now it's back a potential dangerous hazard threat. Or in late 2019, scientists took a special interest in the new behavioral pattern of the old star. Although the supergiant star regained its brilliance after a few months, scientists were curious as to the cause of the dimming in the first place. Many thoughts were brought forward, one of which suggested that it was a result of the star contrasting before the explosion that would signal the demise of the red giant. However, the data obtained from NASA's James Webb Space Telescope having revealed that the reason for the apparent dimming of the star was nothing more than the dust clouds raised from the ejection, shut down that theory. With the puzzle solved, scientists once more believed that the supernova would not occur for another 1.5 million years. It has been confirmed that Betelgeuse's color has changed from a yellowish-orange to red within the last two millennia. This piece of information, together with the theoretical calculation of the star being about 14 times larger than our sun, with the mass being the defining parameter of the star's evolution, it can be 14. Oh. Information, together with the theoretical calculation of the star being about 14 times larger than our sun. Okay, I'm, I thought I heard 1400 earlier, I was about to say, but 14 times, I got it right now. With the mass being the defining parameter of the say. star's evolution, can be deduced that Betelgeuse is about 14 million years old. It can also be deduced that the red supergiant is in its late evolutionary stage, and in the next 1.5 million years, it would explode and die. Some scientists believe that merely detecting gravitational waves from the old red star is not enough to sentence the star to death. According to Salvo Vitellier, a professor of physics at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, the wave coming from the direction of Betelgeuse does not mean the wave came from Betelgeuse itself, Salvo further reminds us that just before a supernova, neutrinos are released. This has also neutrinos. not occurred. In addition, the fact that Betelgeuse still shines at night, even though it is relatively dimmer than usual, would not make Betelgeuse a likely candidate for gravitational wave emission. There is a possibility that what was detected was not even a gravitational wave. The wave intercepted does not have any of the known mergers. If this is true, then what would have caused the detected wave is a mystery. Noise from the Terra activities on Earth may be a cause, but this possibility has been ruled out. Supernovas can be incredibly beautiful. They can take up several shapes and colors, but this depends on the type of supernova and its environment. Despite their visual appeal, we must remember they are as dangerous as they are aesthetically pleasing. One of these supernovas' main dangers is that they release high-energy radiation upon explosion. These huge bursts of gamma rays can be thousands of times more powerful than the energy emitted by our sun. Wow. If these radiations hit the Earth, it can be deadly to life on Earth, as these gamma rays can damage the DNA of Terra life forms. So Least therein lies the threat, right there. That's the part I was missing. That answers a lot. That makes a lot of, a lot of sense now. ...emitted by our sun. If these radiations hit the Earth, it can be deadly to life on Earth, as these gamma rays can damage the DNA of Terra life forms. Researchers are divided as to whether the Betelgeuse is about to go supernova on us. Some believe its time is almost done, while others believe the red giant still has a couple of tens of thousands of years in it. The last time a supernova appeared within our Milky Way galaxy was in 1604, or, at the very least, the last one known to have been seen. It's possible that there have been further nearby supernovas since then, although they were probably hidden by atmospheric gas and dust. The Crab Nebula, whose light first reached Earth in 1054, is one of the remnants of supernovas that occurred in the past. The supernova seen in 1987 in the Large Magellanic Cloud, a tiny partner galaxy of the Milky Way, and given the 1987A designation, was the next best thing to Kepler's supernova in recent years. Other galaxies have also had a large number of supernova explosions, which are visible via telescopes, but would have gone completely unnoticed by observers in Kepler's time. To put it another way, it has been a while since we last witnessed a star explosion in our galaxy. Our bright, close supernovae therefore do. According to astronomers, our And that makes sense of why everybody's honed in on Betelgeuse right now. It's been so long since we've had one, so everybody's clinging to the fact, but we may not see it in our lifetime. Come on, y'all. 
galaxy should see between one and three star explosions on average every century. Therefore, a four-century difference is a little larger than one might anticipate. The astronomers of today are considerably more ready for the next supernova than Kepler or anyone else would have been a few decades ago. Yes, they are. The telescopes used by modern scientists can record visible light. These tools will demonstrate what a supernova would appear like if we were able to fly nearby and observe it directly. However, we also have telescopes that can capture infrared light, which has hues that are outside of the visible spectrum and beyond the red end. Since infrared light has longer wavelengths than visible light, it can penetrate gas and dust more easily than visible light, revealing objects that may be beyond the capabilities of conventional telescopes. For instance, the James Webb Space Telescope mostly captures infrared light. Although visible and infrared light are both a component of the electromagnetic spectrum, supernovas also generate neutrinos, which are subatomic particles. Detectors are now available to capture these neutrinos as well. Additionally, scientists now have detectors that can capture gravitational waves, which are thought to be released by exploding stars, but are actually minor vibrations in the fabric of space-time. Hmm. Supernovas come in two different varieties, according to scientists. A white dwarf star sucks material from a partner star in a type 1 supernova until a runaway nuclear reaction occurs, shattering the white dwarf and sending debris hurtling into space. A type Y was Kepler's. A star that has run out of nuclear fuel collapses under the force of gravity in a type 2 supernova, also known as a core collapse supernova. The collapse then bounces, causing an explosion. Depending on its nature, a supernova may light so brightly that it briefly eclipses the entire galaxy. However, Type II supernovae are particularly intriguing That's because, powerful. in addition to light, they also emit a significant amount of neutrinos. In fact, the neutrino emission may begin a little before the explosion itself. Neutrino detectors would probably catch the signal hours or even days before the explosion itself became apparent if the red giant star Betelgeuse went supernova. Betelgeuse's brightness has fluctuated recently, and some scientists believed it was about to explode. More recent research, however... I remember that. Had me waiting around, looking around, searching different channels, trying to see who getting it live, all that type of stuff, man. I tried to watch it. Was Do y'all remember that? That was a crazy time. ...indicates that the dimming was likely brought on by dust clouds or sunspot activity on the star's surface. However, it is anticipated that the massive star will explode soon. Astronomers will be notified automatically if galactic supernova neutrinos arrive on Earth by the Supernova Early Warning System, or SNOOS, a network of neutrino detectors. The network will use data from seven different detectors, located in six different countries plus Antarctica, to determine the supernova's approximate direction in the sky, so that optical instruments can take a closer look. Today, astronomers are ramping up SNOOS 2.0, which will serve the same function as its predecessor, but with improved triangulation ability. Neutrino science was still in its infancy when 1987A exploded, but three active detectors nevertheless managed to record 20 neutrinos. Thousands or maybe hundreds of thousands of neutrinos will be captured by the global network of detectors if a supernova occurs right now within our galaxy. If a collapsing star is heavy enough, it may generate a black hole, in which case the whole explosion fizzles out. This particular scenario could produce an exceptionally startling signal. The neutrino stream would abruptly cease in that case. That would be incredibly interesting because you could actually see this sudden cutoff that would signify the formation of a black hole. The missing star may potentially be found by astronomers searching through lists of known stars. According to Scholberg, if you see a blank, a missing star, that could be the location of a newly formed black hole. The biggest stars are the celebs of the universe. They are extremely uncommon, enjoy opulent lives, and pass away in ferociously destructive supernova explosions. Even though these phenomena are amazing to see, they can take on a menacing tone when they happen closer to Earth because an explosion within a specific minimum safe distance would be extremely dangerous for people on Earth. We have discovered that roughly three million years ago, a star burst close to the Earth on the moon as well as in ancient samples of deep ocean material, what radioactive star? iron atoms, iron 60 or 60 phi, have been discovered. These distinctive atoms are minute, distinguishing pieces of supernova explosion waste.
Thus, for the first time, we can study the nuclear flames that drive exploding stars and disclose explosions that occurred before recorded human history by using marine deposits and lunar core. I gotta look that up, because they basically just breezed past it and didn't give us whole information on that star that, that blew up before, back in the 1600s or whatever. I mean, tell us what happened back then so we know what to expect now other than lots of radiation and different things like that. You know, like I want to know. So I'm going to have to try to find that video on what happened back then on the star, previous star explosions and stuff like that. As telescopes. Additionally, an explosion that happened so close to Earth was likely a near miss, which released a lot of radiation that may have been hazardous. Earth has faced several challenges during the course of its 4.5 billion year existence. The globe has been in danger from numerous disasters, such as enormous impacts, volcanic conflagrations, and cold episodes of Snowball Earth. However, life goes on. Similar to fireworks on Earth, supernova explosions are spectacular to view from a distance, but can be hazardous to onlookers who are too close. There are two ways that all neighboring supernovae can harm the biospheres on worlds similar to Earth. Gamma rays with high energy are released throughout the first few weeks and months. This radiation would be prevented from reaching the ground by our atmosphere, but at a huge cost. The ozone layer would be severely harmed. High energy cosmic rays arrive with the explosion blast wave to the solar system thousands of years after the event. Wow. In addition to harming the ozone layer, these also produce penetrating muon. So it's not like it happens, uh, we didn't feel no effects, we're good, we're in the clear. No, we got to worry about that years and years and years down the line that's crazy man like so i can understand the the angst from everybody trying to pay attention and see what happens because this is the beginning of the start of something that we have to worry about for a long time that's that's scary how do we, how do you defend that what how do we even what do we do like it's a lot of potential threats that we just have no answer for. Particles that directly irradiate terrestrial and marine life. Some supernovae release high and prolonged X-ray radiation for the first year to 10 years following the explosions, which can seriously damage the ozone layer. When a star is covered in a dense blanket of gas that was earlier released by the star itself in a strong wind, such explosions radiate the maximum energy. The kill distance to these events is much greater than it is for the other processes mentioned above because of how powerful the X-ray emission is. The whole result is to make these comparatively infrequent X-ray bright supernovae a threat on par with the other more ordinary explosions. In other words, the danger in the galaxy has increased. Supernovas are undesirable. They have the power to destroy biospheres and cover worlds with lethal radiation. The ozone layer of a planet can be destroyed by a particular kind of supernova years after the explosion, according to a recent study, which adds a new potential danger. The brightness from hundreds of billions of stars combined can be eclipsed by a single supernova. To put things in perspective, Sheesh. consider that Betelgeuse is about to explode. The star is more than 600 light years away from us, but when it goes supernova, it will still be the second brightest object in our sky behind the sun. Betelgeuse, which shines brighter than a full moon, will be visible during the day. It will be so dazzling for a few weeks at the height of the explosion that shadows will be cast even in the dead of darkness. Despite its terrifying brilliance, a supernova's visible light emission only makes up a very small amount of its total energy production. Furthermore, while exposure to high levels of visible light may result in blindness, it mm. doesn't generally have many other detrimental impacts. The high energy radiation linked to the supernova, which typically takes the form of X-rays and gamma rays, is more concerning. High energy radiation has the ability to catalyze oxygen, removing the ozone layer that shields the Earth. Without the ozone layer, life on Earth's surface would be subjected to the full force of the sun's UV radiation, which could result in an extinction event. Within the initial few seconds of a supernova, a radiation blast occurs, but a greater threat emerges afterward. Eventually, hundreds or millions of years later, cosmic rays, which are subatomic particles accelerated to almost the speed of light, erupt from the maelstrom. 
They can also shred ozone layers and cover a planet's surface with deadly radiation, in addition to carrying a sizable portion of the total supernova energy with them. Such occurrences might have occurred in the past. Significant levels of iron-60, a radioactive isotope of iron created only in supernovas, are found in deep-sea cores and lunar regolith, according to analysis. Iron-60 is a sign that Earth was recently struck by a supernova ejecta, possibly within the last few million years. Astronomers have previously determined that we are pretty safe. There are no close supernova candidates that can endanger life on Earth based on the dangers posed by gamma rays and cosmic rays. However, astronomers have discovered a fresh possible threat. A specific type of supernova has the potential to emit deadly radiation that is additional, long-range, and dangerous to worlds like Earth. When a star nearing the end of its life is surrounded by a substantial disk of material, a specific class of supernova arises. A shockwave arises after the initial supernova explosion and strikes that disk. The shockwave causes the disk to become extremely hot, which in turn leads the disk to generate a lot of X-ray radiation. This radiation has a high energy density and a very long range of travel. The brightest X-ray supernovas can overwhelm a planet's ozone layer, depleting it by as much as 50%, which is more than enough to cause an extinction event out to an astonishing distance of 150 light years, according to a recent study by astronomers. Such supernovas would deliver a lethal 1-2 blow. A fragile planet would be bombarded by X-rays months or years after the initial outburst. The cosmic rays would then arrive hundreds or thousands of years later and complete the task before the biosphere had time to recuperate and replace its protective covering. Could life on Earth be in danger from a close supernova? Theoretically, yes, yes but the explosion would need to be quite close. This is yeah. fortunate because a close supernova's radiation blast would be disastrous. The explosion would release gamma, X, and UV radiation over a few weeks. These rays wouldn't necessarily reach Earth, but they would destroy the ozone, ozone layer's protective layer nonetheless. Although it wouldn't transform us into the Hulk, it would remove the stratosphere's ozone layer. Into Without the, the ozone layer, the planet would be inundated with the sun's lethal UV radiation, which may destroy oceanic phytoplankton and have a cascading impact on the food chain, possibly causing a mass extinction. It's possible that such a thing has happened at some point in the history of our planet. A global extinction that occurred at the end of the Devonian period, some 360 million years ago, may have been caused by a supernova, according to scientists. They point out that rocks from that time contain plant spores that appear sunburned, as though blasted by ultraviolet light. Recent evidence suggests that the ozone layer suffered a catastrophic global loss 359 million years ago near the conclusion of the Devonian epoch. Thankfully, there aren't any supernova candidates nearby right now that could be dangerous. The extinction saw the demise of many land-dwelling tetrapods, but those who survived also happened to have five toes, as do their descendants, including humans. If the Devonian extinctions were triggered by supernovae, then we can literally count the ways these explosions have impacted us. Thankfully, no candidate X-ray supernova has been found to be close to Earth. But the galactic habitable zone, the area in each galaxy where life can exist, is now subject to additional restrictions as a result of this research. Star formation is insufficiently high in a galaxy's farthest regions to produce the elements needed to generate rocky planets. However, the dense centers of stars, where stars live and die quickly, are equally fatal because frequent supernovae irradiate the area around them. According to the new research, the galactic habitable zone's inner boundary is likely located further from the galaxy's core than previously thought. Earth is located in one of the galaxy's safest neighborhoods, despite occasionally being hit. <laughs> Supernovas, now. however, also produce new things. Many of the heavy elements we rely on, such as the oxygen we breathe, calcium in our bones, and iron in our blood, were created in nuclear reactions that took place deep inside exploding stars and spread throughout space as a result of the blast waves they generated. According to astronomers and physicists, we are made of star stuff to quote Carl Sagan. So do we fear them or welcome them? Fear them. Thanks for watching another episode. And ask me that question after giving me that information. I fear them you see what they could potentially do the ray the radiation that we'll receive from it destroying the ozone then now we got to deal with the sun's rays like all of that's bad now i can see why more information i can see why they're honed in and focused on beetlejuice and waiting to see what 
will potentially happen with it. We don't have any other ones really to look at at the moment. I think he kind of briefly mentioned one, but didn't really go too far in depth about it. But I see why now. Understand. And it's understandable. <laughs> I mean, y'all get at me in the comment section, man, and let me know what you thought about this video. Great info. It's your boy L. Stick around and stay tuned. Till next one, I'm gone. Peace.